This show gave us an inside look at the life of a fictional mafia boss as he struggles to balance his crime family with his real family. So what, no f***ing ZD now? Hey! Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 episodes of The Sopranos. I think they're good. Especially with Carmel. But then she starts ragging on me about the future, how she's worried. I mean, what's gonna happen to them if I'm dead? For this list, we're looking at the best moments from what many people consider to be one of the greatest television series of all time. Many of these episodes contain major events, so a spoiler alert is most definitely in effect. I'm in a waste management business. Everybody immediately assumes you're mobbed up. It's a stereotype, and it's offensive. Number 10, for all debts public and private. Hey, throw it all away now. Waste it all! John D. Rockefeller, waste it all! The premiere episode of season four sees the show take a dark turn that would mark its last seasons. My uncle, the boss of his family, is on trial for his life. And what you people are kicking up to him is a f***ing disgrace. With the recession affecting everyone differently, Tony comes to a harsh realization that the only way out of his criminal life is through death or jail. Two endings for a guy like me. High profile guy. Dead or in a game. He believes, however, that he may be able to escape either outcome by distancing himself from the everyday family operations to avoid potential prosecution. Not many men could survive without the love and support of their wife and children. No, 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 no. I'm talking about business. You trust only blood. Tony chooses Christopher to act as his buffer and cements this promotion by giving him the location of the man who allegedly killed his father. I didn't kill your father, but you could... You don't want a cop kill on your head! Many consider season four to be the best season of The Sopranos, and this episode is where it all begins, as Christopher Moltisanti changes forever. <laughs> Three. Don't move a muscle or I'll put a bullet through it. Number nine, The Blue Comet. What's with the tone? You sound like you're glad I'm taking it on the chin. Maybe you're projecting hostile feelings. The penultimate episode of The Sopranos truly was the beginning of the end. Listen to me, and I don't have any time to go into a debate about any of this, okay? And it's important that we all leave for a little while until things settle down. To start, it marked the last appearance of Dr. Melfi, who finally concludes her sessions with Tony after realizing he's nothing but a sociopath. Since you are in crisis, I don't want to waste your time. You know, I gotta be f***ing honest. As a doctor, I think what you're doing is immoral. The war between New Jersey and New York is on, and Tony attempts to end it quickly by having New York boss Phil Leotardo whacked. Who knows what the f*** he's got planned exactly. You get word to everybody, eyes in the back of your head. Break routines, collections, all that shit. A case of mistaken identity prevents this from occurring, however, and New York strikes first, murdering Bobby and putting Silvio into a coma. Who can cling to? With two of his top guys out of the picture, Tony's forced into hiding, where he reflects on a prophetic statement Bobby once made to him about one's own murder. You probably don't even hear it when it happens. Number eight, Soprano Home Movies. You know, I gotta admit it, every time, once you're up here, it's pretty great. What is it about Monopoly that sends people into fits of rage? Under the boardwalk, witty schlong and change my house. Oh, God, Bobby! Throw two Sopranos into the mix and you have a recipe for disaster. But the story helped nab the show the Emmy Award for Outstanding Drama Series. What the f*** are you doing? You beat me fair and square. Tony and Carmela visit Bobby and Janice at their summer home, resulting in a drunken brawl between Tony and Bobby that's about way more than just a board game. After Bobby wins, we're left wondering whether the lovable Bobby Bacala's days are numbered, as Tony has killed over way less. He is head of the family. You think he's just gonna wake up tomorrow and forget about this? Instead, Tony has him commit his first murderous punishment, putting an end to Bobby's good guy image and setting the tone for a dark end to the final season. Number seven, 
Kennedy and Heidi. This day's a gift. Every time I look at my kid, that's what I realize. Can I share with Junior? Please. Prone to violent outbursts and suffering from on-again, off-again drug addiction, the question wasn't if Christopher was going to die, it was when. But his death actually came when we least expected it. Even still, I say let him have it. Life's too short. In this Emmy-winning episode, Chris and Tony have finally reconciled their differences and are driving home when Christopher rolls his SUV. <laughs> Tony, who has only cuts and bruises, is about to call 911 until Christopher admits he's fallen off the wagon again and pleads with Tony to take the blame for the accident. Never pass a drug test. Instead, seeing the destroyed car seat in the back, Tony realizes that Christopher is a danger to more than just himself and kills him with his bare hands. <coughs> the rest of the show sees Tony handling Christopher's death with anger, avoidance, and eventually acceptance. He's dead. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> Number six, whoever did this. It's funny about God and fate and shit like that. The horse gets better when we take out 200 grand in insurance on the race coming up. Suddenly there's a fire. Just like Christopher, we all knew that Ralph Cifaretto was not gonna survive the show. After Tony and Ralph's co-owned racehorse, Pi Oh My, dies in a suspicious fire, Tony visits Ralph to question him about it. Don't give me that look. It was a fucking horse. Tony has turned a blind eye to a lot of Ralph's horrible deeds in the past, but when Ralph hints that he started the fire to collect the insurance money, Tony kills him on the spot. It was a beautiful, innocent creature. What did she ever do to you? Tony's brutal nature is on full display in this episode, which also marks the beginning of Junior's battle with Alzheimer's disease, something that would become a major storyline of the series. Can I have some ice cream? What? Uh, well, right there. <laughs> Number five, long-term parking. You were looking down the barrel at 25 years. But I didn't do nothing. Take your head out of your ass, Adriana. You knew exactly what you were doing. If The Sopranos showed us anything, it's that things do not end well for rats. Why are you crying? He's gonna be fine. The pressure of being an FBI informant begins to weigh too heavily on Adriana in this episode, and she reveals to Christopher that she has been helping the feds. They wanted me to wear a wire, but I wouldn't do it. But, 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 but now there, there was a murder, Christopher, and they know about it. We've seen for ourselves that Adriana is just trying to protect Christopher from both prosecution and Tony, and she attempts to convince Chris to run away with her. Remember that, that time, Lake George? How you loved it? We could live someplace like that, maybe. You could start writing again. I could do my memoirs, finally. Chris wavers, but eventually chooses Tony and the family. And Adriana is killed by Silvio in what is the most heart-wrenching and difficult-to-watch death of the series, even though it occurs off-screen. This was a brutal, unfortunate end to a relatively innocent character. I can't stand the pain. I love dog. <laughs> Number four, college. Dad, you're being honest with me, right? Pretty soon here, you're gonna start hurting my feelings. The Sopranos was at its best when Tony was attempting to balance his family with the family and no episode did it better than this one. Are you in the Mafia? Am I in the what? Whatever you want to call it, organized crime. That's total crap, who told you that? While on a college tour with Meadow, Tony happens to notice a rat who disappeared into witness protection some time earlier. Eventually, Tony tracks the informant down and kills him, the first murder committed by Tony in the series. Jimmy says hello from hell, you f we clearly see both sides of this character, caring father and a brutal murderer. And an iconic anti-hero is born. How come your parents were anti-education? They weren't anti. Can't lay it all off on them. 
I got into a little trouble when I was a kid. The side plot is fantastic as well, as Tony's wife Carmela is shown to be aware of some of Tony's activities and nearly cheats on her husband with a priest, helping to earn Edie Falco her first Emmy Award. Oh my God, my car's been out there all night in plain sight. If we didn't do anything wrong, we didn't do anything wrong. Is there a commandment against eating Zidi? Number three, Fun House. What the worst part of this is? This is one of those situations where I know I'm dreaming. If you thought Tony would spare Big Pussy Bump and Sarah because of their long history, think again. I got Pussy on the brain. I always do. Pussy was a troubled character throughout season two, struggling under the pressures of being an FBI informant against one of his best friends. A year and a half, no. Less. A year and a f***ing half you've been running your own f***ing gossip column? In this Emmy-nominated episode, it takes multiple food poisoning-induced fever dreams for Tony to realize that Pussy is a rat. And together with Silvio and Polly, they all take one last boat ride together. Not in the face, okay? Give me that. They briefly reminisce and share a final drink before the trio fills Pussy's body with bullets and dumps it into the sea to sleep with the fishes. This is arguably the toughest murder for Tony in the series, but one he has to commit to protect himself. Number two, White Caps. And I felt probably like someone who was terminally ill and somehow they managed to forget it for a minute and then it all comes back. The season four finale contains the most brutal argument between Tony and Carmela in the entire series, but balances it with a funny, much less intense side story. Fucking gangster asshole! Both James Gandolfini and Edie Falco won Emmys for their performances in this episode, as Carmela finally draws the line on Tony's infidelity after one of Tony's mistresses calls the house. You know what I don't understand, Tony? <laughs> What does she have that I don't have? This marital dispute was four seasons in the making, as Tony and Carmela let it all out at once. You have made a fool of me for years with these whores. Now it's coming to our home? During this whole disaster, Tony is also trying to get his deposit back on a summer home and uses some non-physical musical means of intimidation. I Call the police. I Just turn it down again when the police boat comes. Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. We got work to do. New avenues. Everything's gonna be all right from here on in. Come on. But you are not going to hell. You're coming back here. Ask yourself a question. Am I that fucking stupid? Huh? Am I that fucking stupid? Really? I'm not going to break the social compact, but that's not saying. There's not a certain satisfaction in knowing that I could have that asshole squashed like a bug if I wanted. Number one, Pine Barrens. Jesus Christ, look at you two. All night in this f***ing hellhole. Who would have thought a show about the mafia could be so funny? Guy was an interior decorator. This house looked like shit. This episode is pure comedic gold, as we see Tony attempt to balance several elements in his life, including his affair with Gloria Trillo, which begins to spiral out of control. You know what? I don't got time for this shit. Oh, now you're gonna leave your low life piece of shit? You know what? Here, take your fing dinner! But perhaps more important is the storyline reminiscent of a Coen Brothers movie as Christopher and Polly get lost in the Pine Barrens after a routine collection goes terribly wrong. How far is it to Atlantic City? Ah! Oh! 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 Directed by future cast member and frequent Coen Brothers collaborator Steve Buscemi, it's your classic fish-out-of-water storyline with plenty of dark humor and banter between the odd couple. Do yourself a favor, Chrissy, and go back to sleep. Why, so you could choke me? What? Think I'm stupid. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite episode of The Sopranos? What do you care what people think? You know the truth. I gotta live in the world. And now I look like Joe Jerkoff. For more great top tens published every day, 
be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Stop.